Hi, this is Crystal Hardison from Southeastern Livingston Center. I'm the director, and you are listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Hey everyone, it's Jim Chapman with Local Leaders of the Podcast, and I want to make you aware of a fantastic deal they have going on right now at Fit Body Boot Camp in Denham Springs, Louisiana. If you go to the link getfitdenhamsprings.com slash local leaders, you can get $30 off of the regular price of $129 for 30 days of classes. Go to the link, click it, sign up. 30-day classes for only $99 through that link. It's a special deal offered to all of our listeners at Local Leaders, the podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. And the gentleman sitting across from me who has a huge history here in Denham Springs is Senior Master Jason Dendy. So first of all, welcome Senior Master Dendy to Local Leaders. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. I'm excited. I'm excited today. As a matter of fact, when I was scripting this thing out, I had to kind of cut it down a little bit because I'm like, man, we're going to go for like three hours if I'm not careful. A lot to cover today, and I want to kind of talk a little bit about you first before we get into your business. Uh, you're a senior master, which is an eighth degree black belt, correct? Actually, it's a seventh. I just tested for eighth. Gotcha. I'm going through the process to be a chief. Fantastic. So that'll make you a chief master. Once I finish the process. Technically, uh, they've just got to go through that approval process on that. It's a little bit more than that. Gotcha. You got to do some training. You got to do, um, I have a Vegas coming up. We got to do training in Vegas. Gonna My son and I, he's going to go with me. We're going to climb Turtle Peak Mountain. Gotcha. Group. And then as it gets closer, we have, have to do more training and we have to do a fasting. Oh, a fasting. Yeah. How long you got to fast? It's going to be um, three days weaning off and then uh, two to three days, no food and then weaning back on. Oh, okay. You have to do that for every master title. So, interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I did not know that. Every, That's interesting. Yeah. Every organization is a little different. I know some people that got their master's title at a lower rank. It's just that's the way that they do it. Yes. We start at sixth degree, and just because you test it mean you become a master. Right. Right. Yeah, that's, that's just the, the testing. That's right. You know, but there's a lot behind that. There's no doubt about it. And your son's going to be climbing a mountain with you? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to have a, a big group going up Turtle Peak. I've been it's Red, uh, Red Rock Canyon in Vegas. So yeah. I've done it before. It's a pretty good little hike. It's nothing easy, but it's good. <laughs> well, I, you know, when you get when you get up that high ranking and in any martial art, I mean, it, you know, easy kind of goes out the window. It gets a little difficult at that point. It should be yes. uh, something, uh, you know, that challenges people. So very good. Uh, now, you've been a student of Taekwondo since 1987. And folks, to put that into perspective, the number one song in 1987, Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Uh, we all remember that one. And to paint an even clearer picture, how long has that been? I actually had hair in 1987. So that's been that's been a while. Uh, so I'll tell you, Taekwondo actually runs in your family. Your wife, Rachel, is a fifth degree uh, and also a teacher. So uh, which could be tougher than Taekwondo in some cases. You know, we love our teachers and uh, your 12 year old son, also a student, in addition to playing baseball. Yes. Uh, you have a six year old daughter that uh, is also a student, in addition to doing gymnastics. Correct. Yes, Another great sport that, um, that you know, benefits kids and, and adults alike. Yes. I'll tell you, gymnastics, back when I was younger, it, I don't know how to say this, but it wasn't something, you know, it was football for guys and, right. and taekwondo and things like that, you know. Uh, but gymnastics, a lot of a lot of things to learn there. Go try to get on them rings and see. I think any sport is good to do. 
Yeah, hundred percent activity, very right? Very much so. Very, very important. Very uh, so you've quite literally been in martial arts your entire life. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So my first question is, what age did you start, and uh, why did you start? What what kind of put you into martial arts? I was getting out of sixth grade, going into seventh. Yeah. Uh, my brother came home one day and said, you come with me to Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, okay. That's pretty much how <laughs> That sounds happened. fun. That's right. We lived yeah. in the we lived in the country, so we had to drive to the next town. Yeah. They had a small club two days a week. So yeah. that's the way that's the way we started. So we went every Tuesday and Thursday. Very good. And what town was that? Irwinville. Irwinville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We instructor, my, my instructor at that time was David Villery. David Villery. Is he still a- around or? He's not uh, associated with any martial arts, but he is still That's around. Right. Oh, yes. very good. Very good. Uh, so, you know, a, a lifetime of it. And it's very important today. And, and I, I want to provide a big focus on your history in the community here. You, you're from the Irwinville area, but you've been out of here a long time. Matter of fact, you've had a business out of here a long time. Yes. Always on Range Avenue. Even though you've moved a couple times, it's always kind of been on Range. Correct. And, and uh, so I would imagine Range has been good to you and the community's been good to you yes. to, to be around that long. So let's get into your business. As I said, uh, you've been a staple here for well over 20 years. Yes. Uh, and... I always say one thing on this show, and that is longevity speaks volumes. And, it, and it, what I mean by that is when you're a business that has crossed like a 20-year plateau, for example, it not only speaks to uh, the community's, community's acceptance of your business, but also speaks to the legitimacy of your business. And what I mean by that is if you're someone that – uh, you don't have a strong organization behind you or you you're not doing the right things relative to maybe your product, whatever it is, isn't working. Uh, you're not going to last 20 years. You're not going to last five years in all likelihood. Most businesses fail within that amount of time. So uh, reputation is important, but extremely important in the martial arts world, right? Correct. Yeah, you're correct on that. I, I think the biggest thing is to make sure whatever you in, in any business, that you're true to whatever you do. And yeah. Make sure that whatever you teach, like if I'm, I'm teaching Taekwondo, I make sure that I think about what should we instill in these people that walk in? What should they learn? And how do we teach it? I'm not saying I'm the nicest person whenever I teach. I'm, I try and joke around, but I'm very strict and I'm very structured. Yes. And believe it or not, a lot of kids love that. They might not realize they love it, but they like that approval. They like that structure. And then after every class, I'll have one or two kids come up to me and give me a hug. No matter if I gave them push-ups or not, they'll still give me a hug. Yeah. Because they know and I'm pushing them to be better. Uh, maybe they're seeking that, right? It could be a couple of different reasons. We have um, single parents, single moms that come in that look for discipline from maybe a, a gentleman. Yeah. They want other forms of discipline or even parents in general that maybe they're having trouble in certain areas with that per, with that child, if it is a child. Yeah. And they're just sitting there saying, you know, how can you help us? And I said, well, we need to talk. Don't just think that I have the answers. We have to do it together. Yes. And that's the biggest thing. Yeah, 100%. And everybody, you know, it's just like what you just said. Um, uh, structure is important. And people seek that. People seek um, uh someone rewarding them for the good things they do and and also the bad things they do not rewarding them right the opposite right. of that and especially kids because they're in that rearing stage in life and and uh you know i i was in taekwondo and I, and you were a fourth degree when i was in i still remember and so it's been a little while but um uh, one thing I always remembered about you that really stands out to me is your ability to teach kids is is uh, something I admire. Um, it takes a patience that some people just don't have. They, uh, But people that are as good at it as you are, it, you have a passion for it, right? And that's, that's a gift. I mean, it really is. And it goes way beyond martial arts to me. 
Um, so much respect there for that, because I can remember even back then I was like, wow, man, I wish I had that patience that that guy has. And, well, you know, I am human. Yeah, there sure. Is, sure. There, we all there, made, <laughs> there is, there is days that I'm like, okay. <laughs> I kind of look at the kids. I'm like, you see my new two gray hairs you just gave me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, at least they're not gone. They're gray. <laughs> <laughs> so you got something there. Hey, when it comes to podcasting, local business, I want perfection. And when it comes to banking, I want personal service, and that's why I bank with Hancock Whitney. Hancock Whitney Bank not only provides me with a local business banker, but also the experience and knowledge only a bank with a history of over 100 years can provide. With over 230 branches in the Gulf South, Hancock Whitney can service all of your banking needs, including commercial lending, small and large business accounts, personal bank accounts, and much more more. For more information, visit HancockWhitney.com. Hancock Whitney Bank, your dream, their mission. Um, So your school is affiliated with the American Taekwondo Association. Correct. Can't say enough about them, but I'm going to let you kind of, before we get into your specific school, kind of explain the American Taekwondo Association and its affiliation with uh, Inspired Martial Arts. Okay. So ATA, American Taekwondo Association, is the organization of my school. So that's our background. Um, Hung Yu Lee, that actually created the organization, created Songnam Taekwondo. Now, that wasn't done when he first came over. He came over just like a lot of people, and he was doing the what, what was called the Chunji patterns like everyone else. And then they sought out looking to develop different patterns that had more kicks to match Taekwondo because Chunji patterns were more Japanese. Yes. So whenever they developed that, that's why whenever you look at our forms, we have a lot more kicks. They're higher than some. They're, you know, they're uh, we go we go different ranges. We still have a lot of hand stuff, but ATA gives us the bones, the background of everything that we need to do to teach and gives us more stuff that helps progress in our businesses also, but also in our um, training. Very good. Because we didn't stop just, I want to say right when you were, when you were there, we just started weapons. Yes. Yeah. And that was a while back. And I think the first weapon was um, the song, which was nunchucks. Yep. And then the bongwani, which is the scream of the single stick. And yep. those were the first two weapons. So correct. We, we have a lot more now. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I'm 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 like, man, I picked the wrong time to almost the wrong time to join because I or get out. It actually would probably be a better term because y'all have uh one interesting thing about ATA and inspired martial arts that I do want to bring up that I think is important is um times change. And um one good thing about you folks is you change with the times, right? Um, you added additional weapons. You, um, you know, and you can speak on this obviously more than me, but I'm sure you adjusted uh, things to fit the interest of the times, correct? Well, yes. So, yeah. And let's talk about that. So yeah. you have traditional Taekwondo, mm-hmm. uh, our forms, our sparring, and mm-hmm. then there's something called one steps for the you. For the um, lower ranks. Yes. So it's a partner. It's two people facing each other, not making contact. One going at you. In other words, um, progressing at you in a um, maybe a punch or kick manner. Then you're going to defend it without making contact, doing a certain amount of moves. Those are one steps. Yeah. That progresses into the sparring, which is contact. Point sparring. Yes. Now, once you do point sparring in your forms, they said, you know, let's go ahead and develop some other things. So they got into weapons. Those were the first two. Yes. Once they started adding a couple more, then they said, wait a minute, they have this new thing coming out. It's called XMA. XMA is extreme martial arts. Okay. Now we have extreme martial arts open hand, creative open hand, which is still whatever you develop, and XMA is whatever you develop, it's just you're limited. Creative, it's a two-minute form with music, 
XMA, two man F1 with music. The difference, XMA is no holds. You can do flips. You can do anything you want, 540s, 360s, anything your body can contort to, you can do it. Wow. It's very intense compared to traditional. It's not like a traditional form. Yeah. Creative, they want you to make a creative form, more of a Sanam style. Yeah. Uh, even though a lot of people don't, they kind of mimic with the XMA, but that's what they like. But you cannot do anything over a 360 turn, nothing um, inverted, mm -hmm. no split, anything like that. Gotcha. Then they said, well, now let's make different weapons for those. So they can use different weapons, a little bit shinier weapons, something that they can spin faster. Um, and that's where the extreme martial arts, they can just utilize everything. Wow. Then they progress with more weapons as it went through. Yes. So, yes. Um, and that's really a big thing. It to, is. That progression. It is. The progression now, not everyone is good at everything. Yeah. Some people are. Some people don't like forms, but they love sparring. Maybe weapons, don't look at weapons as a weapon. Look at it as a gross motor, motor skill tool that your child or yourself, because the, the parents are just sitting there watching them. All right, parents, now you're going to put the weapons in your hand. You're going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> they figure out it's not that easy. Right. You have to learn to think, spin, all that stuff on your own. Well, it's just a good gross motor skill tool. It really is. A lot of hand-eye coordination. Yes. Um, it, it, you know, and when you work them right, and I, I, I can only speak from what I've seen, uh, but I'm going to try to show some videos for y'all in this video and, uh, y'all will see what I'm talking about. It's, it's really beautiful stuff when it's done correctly. I mean, you work a set of nunchucks and you do some of those forms that people do with nunchucks. Uh, it's something to be seen and I really like it. You know, I, we have traditional chucks. We have XMA. I have um, a couple of people that have took world champ in the single chuck. Single yes. Then I have a one or two people specifically in my school that are extremely talented with double uh, XMA chuck. Yeah. Very good. Really? I mean, yes. Awesome. Yes, they can flip them things way more than I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that look, he can do them. So uh, I remember those days, and and uh, they even have competition teams, I guess you could say, in ATA or exhibition teams that specialize they, in that stuff. They do. They yeah. do. Not as much as what they used to. We call them demo. Demo. Um, demo that's, teams. Yeah. But um, we have that. But always, nowadays, we have team sparring. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's also new. Yeah, that's, that's new. That's really fun. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, the I, only I time that. that you can coach. So yeah. I can actually coach my team. Oh, you so, like that. <laughs> because one thing interesting is when you achieve rankings as high as uh, as Master Dendy, you, um, you don't get the opportunity to compete like you used to yourself, no. right? No, I can only compete at national events. Yeah. So this is his, I guess, way of, you know, he has a competitive spirit, right? Just like all of us. And and this is his way of competing. Hey, this is my team. Come on over That's here. Right. And, and I love that. Uh, so as we just mentioned, you're an eighth degree. Um, that, to tell y'all how high of an achievement that is, uh Ninth degree, they have an, a tenth degree, which is an eternal grandmaster, which is H.U. Lee, uh, the founder of Song of Taekwondo. Um, but uh, no one will, that's his rank. And and uh, so ninth degree is as high as you can go, period, pretty much. In Song of Taekwondo. Yes. And that is extremely rare. Um, how many ninth degrees have they had? Just a couple, right? They, they have... Um Five or six. Five or six, yeah, uh, over the history of Song of Taekwondo. So um, you are you are one step away from, you know, being the highest achievement that you could possibly get in Song of Taekwondo, and that is from 34 years of hard work. Yes, sir. That's impressive. And, uh, and what it says to me is um, this is someone that basically took something from childhood and has seen it all the way to this point. And I don't care what business you're in. If you're, if you're a, a, um, uh, grass cutter and you've done it for 34 years, you have a passion for it, right? Yes, uh, 
your passion and your ability to see something through like that is what impresses me the most because life happens in between that. I mean, 34 years of time, there's a lot of things that go on in your life. Do I need to stop doing this to do this or whatever? And, and you go through those and you saw all of that through and that. And so to me, when you're teaching students, uh, you're an example of seeing any task through and you're still doing it still to this age, probably still learning. You never stop learning. Never stop learning. That's right. Uh, never stop learning. So I want to dispel some, uh, you know, some, something that, uh, maybe a perception that some people have, especially in other disciplines as it relates to Taekwondo in general. And that is, oh man, these Taekwondo sc schools, they're black belt factories. You know, they, they award them to kids and, and uh, a kid ain't a black belt and all that kind of stuff. And they can't beat me up or whatever, <laughs> you know, all this stuff that people who are uneducated in that say, um, I want to take it a step further. Many folks don't don't know that I was a Taekwondo student, as I mentioned earlier, in the early 2000s. I achieved a rank of brown belt, which is just two two belts away from black. So I can speak a little bit educatedly on this. Um, and I want to get your thoughts on this after I, I kind of give my thoughts. And my thought has always been this. In my opinion, a black belt is measured by technical ability, not necessarily power. And I think that's where people get it twisted. They look at a black belt and they say, well, that guy's got to be able to beat everybody up to be a black belt. That's not the case. It's all, to me, it's all about technical ability and it is all about growth. So for example, a child's roundhouse kick at 12 years old or, 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 10 years old is not going to have the power that a 25 year old guy is going to have on a roundhouse kick, obviously, but his technique might be better. And guess what? That kid's going to grow. You know, his growth is inevitable. So if that technique stays sharp or sharp ends from that black belt stage, eventually that power is going to catch up. And, uh, and you're also, in my opinion, rewarding someone's uh, ability to achieve and and uh, and master a a aspect of, for example, color belts. You know, you go through those belts and you're mastering forms, you're, or maybe you're mastering weapons or or sparring or whatever it is, and that's what you're getting rewarded for. That's that's achieving that goal, and the goal is the next belt. Let me get your opinion on that. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. This is not the first time I've heard this. I've, heard, <laughs> I've talked about this before. So let's talk about um, knowledge. Let's talk about life. Let's say that kid comes in. You don't know what that kid has came in at and where they're at when they get their black belt. It might be a 100% turnaround. They might be achieving that black belt on the, the just the perseverance of going through all life's stuff. We don't know what their... their um, Demons are, in other words, if they have, they go to the hospital a lot, if they have life issues, we don't know. I might know some of that. Yeah. But that person making those comments don't. That's right. The general public don't. Correct. For sure. So wh what are you looking for? Are you looking for someone to beat someone up? Or are you looking for someone that is going to be a leader? Yes. Or are you looking for someone that's going to step in the ring and put themselves out of the comfort zone of their their environment to achieve something that they are going to become later in life because they're going to have to stand in front of people, do a book report. They're going to have to do all this. So not only they're achieving their black belt at an early age, but they're achieving so much more to prolong all the stuff they're going to do in school to look at what they're going to do in the future. Yes. That's the stuff that a lot of people don't think about. Whenever other disciplines talk about that, I don't take away from other disciplines. No. I believe in all disciplines. I really do. No. I, I love them all. I have friends in all. And we have a lot of conversations. Never about this, though. Yeah. Never about stuff like this. 
It's about how martial arts can help. But when someone says the Bell Factory, what is a Bell Factory? Yeah. Did that person do what was qualified to become a black belt? Did that person go out and train and stick to whatever? And, and I want you to tell me, how hard is it for a six, seven, well, maybe not six, but seven, eight-year-old to stick with something with perseverance, set their goals? What are we taking away from that? Right. We're not. We're That's a big thing. Yeah. It really is. That's one. Second, I said it earlier, what if they have difficulties in their life? What if they they have, I've had several that used to have to go to the hospital all the time. Yeah. And I would say, what do you mean? You know, I, I didn't understand. And then the mom would fill me in. I'm like, oh, my good gracious. Or stuff in life, maybe um, divorce going on or something like that. And they're just, this is their thing to keep them together. Yeah. To, to keep their gives them something to focus on correct. outside of whatever the issues are going whatever on the issues behind it the scenes. Matter. Also, school. Majority of the people that do this, very few parents come and say their grades are going down. Mm-hmm. Most of them say the grades have went up since they started because now they can focus. I talk about training. I talk about training just like homework. So I say, whenever you're doing homework, it's just like training. So you have to do your homework in here. So it, it still it, it instills in them on what they need to do in life. Yes. That's the whole goal. Yes. I agree 100%. Mentorship is is because uh, you brought up, you know, their grades improve. And I believe parents are parents, right? Where my parents were my parents, coaches for me were the people that I really wanted to impress. And those are the people that I really didn't want to let down because I knew my parents would love me no matter what. But uh, I can remember uh, disappointing a coach, for example, at one point in my upbringing and feeling absolutely horrible about it. You know, my parents could have yelled at me till the sun came home and I knew they're going to love me anyway. This guy might not. And and I didn't want to let him down because he was investing time in me. You're correct on that. So yeah. I, I want to hit on my son. So my son made his black belt at an early age. Yep. Six. He was like six or seven. He was in what we call Italian Tigers, which uh, some people do not allow Tigers to become black belts. I do, but I have a way that I do it. Once they become a black belt and they, you know, they stick around, they have to learn that black belt form. They, I do it in three sessions. In other words, that's a lot of move. So in the first three black belt forms, 81 moves. Wow. So when you look at 81 moves and that child learning those 81 moves, I break it up into 30 moves a little bit increments. Yes. And, and so whenever they test, then they're also learning a weapon. Once they merge all that in, they're merging into the big boy class is what I call it. The yeah. Mixed with adults, um, teenagers, and other people. Then now they're in a different atmosphere. So I'm... I pretty much graduate them to that. Yes. Once they get in there, that's whenever we see, okay, they're ready. Yeah. Now, I, let's let's just take my son, for instance. He's a second degree. He stayed at first degree for four years. Yeah. That Just because they got their black belt, that didn't mean they're going to progress fast after that. He was, he was in the top, he was in the top four in, um, in the world with weapons. He, uh, he's on my, Team sparring team. He's really good at weapons. He might not be a forms guy, but I wasn't a forms guy when I was coming up. When you knew me, <laughs> yeah. I, I was more a sparring guy. Yeah. But I did like this. I, I did like forms. Now I, I switch. As I got older, I get more technical and stuff, stuff like that. Sure. He's great in weapons. He's great in combat weapons. He's not much of a sparer, but he gets out there and he does what he does, and he ends up winning the matches because he listens. Yes. And it's just. It's the point I'm making is why don't you look at the positive instead of the negative? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're so used to looking at negative sometimes because it's not our way that mm-hmm. we forget to look at the positive. I've always believed that martial arts is only partially about fighting, you know, or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And everybody, especially when you're 22, you know, you want to go in there because you want to learn how to kick somebody inside the head and if you have to and those sorts of things. And that's fine. Um, I get it. I did, too. But uh, but what you learn through the journey, 
is that it's really not about that. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. And, and we'll get into that a little bit towards the end of this, uh, that what I feel and I'll get your uh, expert opinion on, um, what it is really all about in the end. Um, so we'll get to that, but I want to get specifically into your school now, inspired martial arts. First of all, the name, I love it. Inspired. It's one of my, my key words is inspire. As a matter of fact, I have it on the back of one of my t-shirts. Uh, and it's something that we all want to do in life. And I can't think of a better name for a martial arts, uh, studio than inspired because that's really what you are doing to not only kids, but adults as well. Um, and we don't want to leave adults out of this at all. No, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. But we'll start with the kids at, at your school in particular. And you brought up Tiny Tiger. Uh, Tiny, they still call them Tiny Tigers? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay, uh -huh. Tiny Tigers. We'll bring them up. And uh, you have an interesting belt system for Tiny Tigers. It's a little different than white. You know, yellow camo and and all of that. You have like turtle and and stuff like that for those folks. They do, they do have. It. I don't actually utilize that as much, but the tiny tiger system, they have animals linked to it. Yeah, but um, it's still progression as in rank. So in other words, they still get the white belt, but they'll get the maybe the camouflage stripe through it. Yes, or stuff like that. So it's still progression. So the biggest thing for tiny tigers is what making sure. They're structured, focused. Um, they, you're still trying to pull them out. We'll get shy ones. We want to pull them out of the shell. Of course, some of them, not all of them are shy. They want to have fun. But this, the biggest thing is structured, following along, making sure they understand, and life skills. Life skills, courtesy, something I show daily. We say it every class, yes. every cycle. We have certain life skills we say all the time, but we emerge them with moves. Yes. So they're in they're they're together with moves. So what I did is I took the one steps and we put words with it. Yes. And we still do the forms. So everything is still there. I do not, I repeat, I personally do not do a lot of playing in yeah. the class. I don't jump around, do a lot of playing because I find that they can get that elsewhere. Yeah. I'd rather stay doing the martial art part of it but also utilizing a little fun with it. That way they they know they can get in there, have fun, but they're still kicking and punching, moving around. We do weapons. I, I think weapons is way more um, important than a lot of people give it credit because that is a big gross motor skill tool like we talked about. Mm -hmm. And for Tiny Tigers to spin that weapon without hitting themselves for Chucks or a staff, yeah. which... Uh, people might think a staff is easier. It's actually harder because it's both hands on it. Yes. So they'll get twisted up, and I'm sitting there looking at them, and I'm trying, I'm like, how did you get that way? And I had to, like, untwist them. So it's just – it, it gives um, – I think Tiny Tigers, I hate to say it, I'm more – I feel more rewarded when yeah. I teach them because I see a lot more progression because they get so excited to do it. Yes. And, uh, and it's a brand new thing for them. And guess what? Those kids don't realize that you're sharpening their motor skills. So it's fun for them. You know, and it, one thing with kids, when they realize you're trying to do something to maybe, oh, we're going to sharpen your motor. Well, that sounds boring. But here, we're going to hand you this staff. and Or right. we're going to hand you these chucks. And we're going to have you work them. And, and uh, hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination big time. And they have a blast with it. It's it's teaching them things behind the scenes that and they'll they always benefit they from. They don't know it's hard. Hard. Yeah, that's right. The older kids think it's hard. They will do whatever because in their mind, this ain't nothing. He's doing it. I can do it. Yeah. Kids have no fear. That's right. You know, it's different than adults. Kids kids will do anything. <laughs> With tiny tigers aside from the self-defense or, or really kids in general that they learn, uh, you mentioned it, confidence, goal setting. How about that? Yes. You know, that's a goal that's an so early yeah. form of, of goal setting when they're looking at these belts. Self control. Yeah. You know, another one. Uh co coordination, you know, we all that mentioned. goes in there. Everything in titles, courtesy, um, integrity. We talk about perseverance, we talk about manners, everything. Yeah. So uh so I you can't you really can't teach anything better than that for for kids. So I'm gonna give you a scenario. 
and mom and a dad come in and they have their seven year old with them. And, and maybe this seven year old is struggling with confidence and somebody told them, Hey, you need to go see master Dindy over there and inspire mm-hmm. martial arts. They help my kid. So they go in there. What is that? first day look like uh for those parents well the first day right when they walk in the first thing i do is you know we greet them and everything and Mm -hmm. if the parents we have a little information sheet so they write certain things down but if the parents tell me we're looking for confident building and all that i don't i don't treat anyone different but if i see that child is looking down and shy i eye contact is a big deal I want them looking in my eyes. I want them talking to me. I want them responding. So everybody's like, um, whenever I say, uh, we got to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Okay. Not all forms of martial arts make you do that. But let's ask that question. Why do we make them do that? So I'm going to ask you, why do you think I make them say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir? Respect. That's one. Give me another. Um, to make them talk to you. That's that's part of it. To hear the response that they heard what I said. Interesting. Yeah. Without them responding back, how do I know they heard me? Yeah. And it goes back to being parents. It goes back to anything. So with that being said, every time they respond back to me, that tells me we're interacting. Yes. So that's one. Second is to get them in the class. Now, if the class is fairly big, I don't just throw that child or teenager or adult in that class. They are working with someone on the side. That person on the side. That's good. That person on the side is a black belt. That doesn't mean that person is an adult. That person might be a teenager, but that's fine. That person is there for a reason. I won't put just anyone working with someone. They teach them how to bow. They teach them the basics. They teach them stances. They teach them all the little things that you don't have to stress. Because if I throw them in a class, they feel what? Yeah, they They yeah intimidated. All right. So that's one thing I definitely do not do. And and there's a big advantage, personally, that I think uh, with one on one kind of interaction, you know, with the new people. I would imagine every ATA school organization they all have different names mm-hmm. but we're still part of the organization yes pretty much every one of them either has a white belt class or they do exactly what i do because they know it doesn't feel good to be thrown into something that everyone else knows more because then you're intimidated you feel you won't come back one you're not helping we're, we will not be helping their confidence we'll be pushing it down further it's a great we point. need to pick it up All right, so how do we pick up someone's conf? Well, let's say a parent says that they're being bullied. They need to learn to defend themselves. First thing out of my mouth is, okay, we need to work on their confidence. Mm -hmm. It's not to teach them how to punch. Yeah. It's to teach them ways that they can build their confidence and the way and something that we need to pull out of them because then they can actually stand up to the bully. Yes, and or, or not be afraid to go tell someone about it. Let me ask you this, and and you would be the one to know. You would be in the know on this question. How big a problem is bullying? Do you think in schools? Bullying is is bad. Really, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes people don't realize they're bullying. Sometimes they forget, or they're teasing someone, or they're making jokes, and it all depends on who that person is. You don't know how that person is. They might take it a total wrong way, and that might hurt them feeling their feelings. Yeah, all that's bullying to me. Yes, yeah, it doesn't have to be physical, right? It does. It, not it could be, be it, making fun of, or that's majority of the bullying nowadays. Yeah, is verbal. Yeah, interesting, and and hurts sometimes worse, you yeah. know, in some cases, and it really brings someone's confidence down, and that's what you can get from Inspire Martial Arts uh, is, uh, especially from a a kid's perspective. The confidence to to know what to to know how to handle that, not necessarily even physically, but you have the confidence for it to roll off your back, maybe. Correct. Uh, that you you might not would have without that without that in your life. So even older adults, um, you know, let's not even say twenties and thirties here. Let's say forties, fifties, sixties. They can all benefit 
by they training can. in martial arts. So let's let's discuss kind of the benefits of the older crowd taking martial arts. And in some of them that I thought of, Master Denny, uh, obviously self-defense, but things like balance, mm -hmm. you know, a big thing, flexibility. reflexes, flexibility, uh, motivation, yes, you know, stress relief. Uh, all of those things I think of. Now, um, one thing to mention here is is uh, you perform testings. Yes. And, and you test for each belt. We do. We test for every belt. And we have curriculum for that belt. Whatever you go through the cycle, we prepare you for the testing. We actually preempt. We do uh, stripes or clips. Some schools do something different. They do what they call a screen week. They prepare you to make sure you do not fail. And the reason is, is if you're not prepared in that week, we don't let you test. Yeah. Now, I could let them test and then not pass them. Well, how would you feel? Right. In front of everyone. Yeah. And what's the benefit of that? I mean. There is none. None whatsoever. You know, and what it what it's doing, it's causing you to fail in, right. in front of a bunch of people, which drops that confidence. Everything is, you know, as you go up in rank, things change. So in the school, we try to instill a lot of things in them, but we prepare them. So if they stay, like I have a lot of younger um, second and third degrees. Hmm. And <clears throat> you might look at it and say, well, he's a third degree. He's only 14. All right. That 14-year-old can do a number two round kick through maybe three wood boards. Yeah. He has some power. Yeah. He loves to spar. He's not big on forms, but he, he loves to spar. I have to get him prepared because when he tests for fourth, he has to go in front of a national panel. It's a total different atmosphere. We can bring someone up to third. We can actually bring some people up to fourth and we do a regional testing. I prefer to push them to national and at least one midterm. And I'll talk about midterms um, be because as you get up in rank, that's where you have to test. Yeah. So I, you're not testing in front of people you know, and that's what I like. I It's like competition. You're going in front of different people that don't know you personally. They're grading you on what they see. Right. So that way it's not, oh, I know him. He's a good friend of mine. You're being graded legitly. Yes. If you pass, what I always call tell people, you blow them out the water. You don't sit there and complain if someone gives you, like a tournament, a low score. What did you do? Did you blow them out the water? Well, maybe you need to go back to the drawing board. What do we need to train on? Yeah. I'm a big believer in competition. Um, as far as testing is progressing, whenever you go to certain ranks, you have to do certain things. Whenever they test for black belt, I make them do certain things. It's not just a regular testing. It's not just doing your form, breaking boards and sparring. You have to show some other stuff. We have to show self-defense. We have to show um, lower rank forms also. Yeah. So it's, it's just a, it's a couple of different things. Do you have to, do you still have to go through all your forms from the beginning from white to black? No, I stopped that. I did personally. That's good. Because, <laughs> man, that's not as easy as you think, you know. It's, well, uh, what, what we've found is we had, we were losing so many people. It's. I want you to imagine um, it, what you just said. It's not a good thing. It's not an easy thing. Yeah. Uh, an eighth grader, uh, eighth, eight year old, I'm sorry, or nine year old going for first degree and they're learning all these forms. They're taking it all in. Then all of a sudden it's going and testing. They're mentally drained. They're right. done. Yeah. I've done my thing. I have achieved what I wanted. The issue is it doesn't stop at black belt. That's when it starts beginning. 100%. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's when that. everything changes. Yeah. And a lot of them, they go through the color the color belts, they get to the black belt, and they see that black belt form, and they're like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that black belt form is sweet, y'all. <laughs> you got to check that out. Uh, so 100%. And so I'm going to ask you the same question on this, and I'm going to give you a, another scenario. And male, female, doesn't matter. 40-something-year-old comes in. And maybe they're looking to lose a little weight. Maybe they're looking to gain some confidence. Maybe, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they're seeking. 
Uh, they come in and they say, I heard that podcast you did with local leaders and it, it sounded good to me. It sounded like fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd like to try a couple classes and you do. Incidentally, they do offer two free classes. Mm-hmm. You can go online uh, and check that out. But, uh, but they, you know, you got nothing to lose there. So they come in and they say, I heard, I heard that on local leaders and I want to try it a couple of classes. Take me through. Uh, is it basically the same scenario as you do with that, with that, Kid that we were talking about? Same scenario. Line them up with someone kind of by themselves and, hey, I'm going to show you how to, you know, yep. throw a punch or uh, well, taekwondo pocket. Or, yep, we do all yeah. that. It's basically learning the basics. And the, the good thing about a lot of this is if it's a family, we have fa- the, our classes are family oriented. Yes. So dad and mom could take classes with their son and daughter. If you hear that, folks? Yeah. That's huge. Seven and above. If the Italian Tigers are different. I don't think you want to jump in there with a tiny tiny. <laughs> but the other ones, you can do it with them. Do it with them. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that, and that separates this sport from a lot of sports because, you know, we all love baseball. Your kid plays baseball, but you're not going to go pitch to him at 13 years old in a game. I know, but you, you, do you, you ever been to a, a small, a young baseball game lately? All those parents, I think they want to get out there as much as they're young. Oh, 100%. So they're yeah. like, come on. I got a high school football games, and I'm like, man, just one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in the hospital, but, hey, so I totally get it. And and that's something that you can share with uh, with your child that, you know, those are memories, man. Those are those are things you can actually achieve a rank with that child at that's the right. same time. And how awesome is that? Them. You can train with them. Yes. It, helps that, it helps out at home, but training – together because you're building what family time too so that's right it's a it's a it's a big deal i love it hey maybe you know there's parents out there that got teenagers right now and maybe they just can't find rapport with them maybe maybe dad works a lot mom works a lot and and they do the best they can but they they just can't find something they can do together this is something you can do together that both of you would enjoy both of you would benefit from you're uh, correct or all of you uh mom and dad even uh, so we mentioned the two free classes that you can definitely, uh, try it out. Uh, and there's, there's no obligation there. You know, try it out see if you like there's it. There's also, you know, people that, um, started mm-hmm. with us and left, they can always come back. I know. I was been thinking about that. You know, I got a couple belts left to make up they just to get to the point where I get to the point. And, right? and they can still use those two days. Yeah. Okay. I'm making a point here. Yeah, I, I follow you 100. <laughs> percent <laughs> And actually, I'm intrigued. And and something that I've always planned on on going back and doing. And you know, life happens, and I ain't gonna give you all those excuses no, you've heard a million times. But, life happens, and then yeah. I, I'm. I understand. Yeah. You also offer classes every now and then, and this is something that uh, I thought was very important to get out, and it, it, such as like female defense training for, for uh, you know, I've actually helped uh, assist in teaching some of these classes way back in the day, and, you know, a guy pulls a gun on you, and you're mm-hmm. female, and, and, you know, you got to get that gun out of the way, and, and you show them moves where you can break, you can move in, and strip that gun out and, and all those sorts of things. Um, do you still offer those? I do. Very good. I do. Um, <clears throat> something that I haven't started back, which I need to, um, we've been getting some phone calls is um, Krav Maga. So I've yes. been, I'm thinking about starting it back, but only two days a week, but merging it with Taekwondo. So doing Krav, but also with the bell system of Taekwondo. So self-defense with, with the Taekwondo part. I'm just kind of teetering on an idea, but the Krav Maga part is Israeli self-defense that was developed for the Israeli military to make it easy for women and men to do it. Yes. Right? No matter who you are. Yes, I do gun knife defense, but that is not the only thing in Krav. A lot of times you won't see that. It'll be grabbing and all that. So we do choke defense. We do. I've been doing that. I got certified in Krav since in, on the week of 9-11. In a while. <laughs> that's that's a heck of a timing. <laughs> it, it was. And yeah. It, it was on the Tuesday, if I'm correct, and uh, we were going through everything. That was the toughest week of my life, believe it or not. Yeah. It is is not not. The Look, and this is a level. guy with 30, 34 years in martial arts. He just said that was the uh, toughest week of yes. his life. Yes. Uh, Krav was. Uh, it was the toughest week. They, what they do is they try to weed you out. 
because they're not. It, it's it was it's tough. serious training. It is, it and is and serious. if they're going to give you that certification, they're you're going to earn it. And, and they're going to make sure that you're not, you're not uh, a slouch, for lack of a better term, Correct. going out there with their name behind you. And, right. and uh, so, yeah, I remember because I was, I was still involved when you, right. when you went and got that training. It appealed to me back then. It appeals to me now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it, different than Taekwondo in some ways, uh, a, lot, a lot more. Uh, it's more street oriented. Yes. So you Love it. so the the difference between first you have a lot of n- new types of Krav Maga coming up. The one that I was affiliated with was the very original, one of the toughest ones you can go through. Now you can go on a weekend, two days, and get a certification. I have been through that one, and I've been through a lot of other ones. So it's not like one week that did it for me. I did a lot of gun knife stuff. I've talked to SWAT team for the Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office several yes. times. Yes. But when you look at Krav, you look at, even if you come in, it's not about punching and kicking a bag. Sometimes um, different places will just throw you on a bag. I will teach you how to punch. I will teach you how to kick properly. Properly, that's the key. Yeah, sometimes people get a little bored and they want to hurry up and punch something, but then they'll break something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So properly. And then um, I, I've had a couple of... Um, Students in Krav um, that have been mugged or oh. attempted to be mugged. Yes. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And um, I've, I've gotten feedback that they were fine and and um, they the assailant did not get away with their stuff. <laughs> the assailant was probably like, uh, yeah, because – and here's the interesting thing, and this is where martial arts training um, is so valuable, in my opinion, is – 99% of the time, whoever is going to try to assault you probably doesn't have training because if they went through a whole bunch of training in most cases, they're not going to assault you because right. of all the things you learn through training, martial arts is so much more than just learning how to fight. Um, that's appealing, especially to us, us alpha males that, you know, we, we love learning that stuff. Um, but it's so much more than that. That is a, a very small aspect of, of your journey. Right. Uh, and, you know, and you can attest to that you've, you've made a lifetime of it, but back to Krav Maga, just r- really quick. I, and I would love to see those classes. I, I'm definitely down for the first class. You, uh, just let me know when and where, and you can beat me up all night long. <laughs> I've always uh, been interested in that. Um, but it is another example of you adjusting and and offering more to the community. Um, Taekwondo is, is amazing. And uh, in my opinion, uh, everything starts off on your feet. And uh, you better know how to kick and you better know how to punch if you ever get in a situation where you need it. But what Krav Maga gives you is options in case you can't kick at right. that particular time or punch. Maybe someone's trying to choke you and right. it's going to show you ways to get out of that. Correct. And you're going to drill those and train those and it becomes second nature and it's muscle memory at that point. And everything is muscle memory. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. So uh, very, very good. Now um, you also mentioned you've done some classes with police officers and I want to, I want to talk about this specifically because it's an important topic right now. Right. A lot going on in the world and the ways in, you know, I have a unique, uh, maybe not so unique, but I have a, a, a really deep respect for law enforcement, really deep respect. And I have a ton of friends that are law enforcement officers. Um, and, you know, it seems like they they're changing every day how these officers deal with being attacked themselves you know, um, injustifiably so in some cases. We've all seen some of the bad videos out there, and, and there's bad in every organization, folks. But um, they're limiting a lot of these officers now, in my opinion, in how they can respond to even being attacked. You know, uh, uh, you got to know the proper way to maybe choke somebody to where you're not causing harm, things like that. You um, Training is where that all comes into play, right? Even defending yourself. If somebody pulls a gun on you and you're a police officer, how are you going to disarm them 
and get to your weapon or, or whatever situation you're in. Um, training is the key. And I think that's where maybe, maybe some departments may, you know, no fault of their own. They just don't have maybe the budget to the time. train like, or the time to train, to train like maybe they would like to. Um, but you offer that. Mainly it was for the SWAT team because I knew someone they, they brought in, but they wanted something specific. Yeah. They were mainly looking for gun defense. Mm -hmm. At that a, time. A great thing to learn. <laughs> but at that time, their gun defense was a little antiquated. Now it has progressed a little bit more. Most of them have taken on this new type, uh, but they're still there. I hear the same thing. They don't get to do the reps. They don't get to train as much. Mm-hmm. So they, sure. their knowledge is there, but it's still not muscle memory. What their muscle memory is, is probably utilizing the gun, the baton, stuff like that, which is very good. Mm. But um, and you are correct on that. And a lot of people don't, they look at cops as, as a one way. I look at it as that gentleman right there, he's what's keeping everybody safe. 100%. They need to, I mean, you respect them. They give you a ticket. We have laws for a reason, just like we have rules. Um, we need to abide by those rules and laws. Let me ask you this, and I, and I don't want to put you on the spot with it, but would that be something you would be interested in getting involved in? If oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, okay. we, we've had I've had people contact me and try to get me in there, but mm -hmm. a lot of times they want it to be internal. Sure, and I understand that totally. Sure, I understand that totally. Yeah, I t I totally get that, but I I think that it's hard to hard 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 to um to replace 34 years of experience. <laughs> and uh, and I think you would bring a tremendous value to something like that, yeah. just one guy's opinion. Be before we go on, yeah. I want to hit on the female self-defense real fast. Yes. Go back to that. Yeah. Um, the, the female self-defense, anytime someone would like to do a self-defense class, they can reach out to me. Yes. And I just sit there and say, well, look, you get so many up and we'll, we'll get it going. The self-defense class for females – um, and it can be males too, but sp if it's specifically females, that's fine. And I have done it a couple of times for teenage girls up to women. Um, but I want to make sure it's always great to just reach out, we'll figure out times, and we'll get it done. The, the only issue I have with any self-defense, anything you do, how about we just put that out there? Mm -hmm. Gun retention, anything. It takes training, takes reps. It takes, you have to do things so many times to be, have a muscle memory. Do you know how many times it takes to break a bad habit? Yeah, I think it's like three weeks or something like that. It's a thousand times, thousand reps. Thousand to break, reps. Roughly to break a bad habit. It's just, I, there's not many people that know this. So if I'm from me to you and you're the attacker, how or let's say I'm the attacker, how far do you think you need to be to feel safe? Six feet. Further. Really? Uh, eight feet. 21 feet. 21 feet. I can get to you before you can pull that gun in the back out. That's interesting. Depending on how, if you trained, it might be different. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. And obviously some people's and, reflexes are going to be a little bit better. Right. And, and and believe it. I did not believe that. Yeah. That's interesting. I I, I specifically did it. I, I made one of my, when Krav Maga, I made one of my students. I'm like, we taped it off. And, 21 and, feet. And I said, all right, you're going to come at me and you, when you touch me, I want to see where I am. And I, we had like a, um, a training gun yeah. and, I had it in the back, and I went to pull, and he was I was right here when he touched me. Interesting. And it's just, it made me realize that awareness is the biggest self-defense. Yes, yes, 100%. 100 and that's a, I would have never thought, 21 feet. And you're someone that's got good reflexes. So it's, you know, you've been working on your reflexes your whole life, and, right. and it took you a little while. Um so that's an interesting stat, Master Denny. There's no doubt about it. Um, so another reason that we need to train these things and and uh, 
And I would love to see that happen, especially with our law enforcement guys, because we want to protect them as much as they protect us in a lot of ways. And so, um, anyway, uh, now I want to read your why statement and this, I want to kind of read it verbatim of what you said, because this speaks to who you are. And I asked you, you know, why do you do what you do? Uh, 34 years of this. And you said, I love teaching. I love seeing self-improvement. I love seeing people build themselves better. Um, the key word there is love. You love what you do, obviously. You wouldn't do anything for four, 34 years that you didn't love, but started off as, as as a youngster, went all the way through. You were, you, you know, you're now an eighth degree black belt, and Nowhere in there did you say, I love the fact that I can kick someone's head off the side of the, you know, their headgear off the side of their head, which you can do. I've seen you do it, but, um, you love seeing improvement in others and that speaks to who you are. So shout out to you on that. I asked you about leaders and I said, uh, what do you, what, how would you define a leader? And you said a leader is someone who takes action and a person who will do anything they would ask someone else to do. hundred percent. I say that all the time. Leaders find their broom. And what I mean by that is leaders will never ask somebody to do anything with such a sweep the floor unless right. they would do it themselves. And uh, you want to see someone that's not a leader. It's someone that's not willing to do something they ask somebody else to do, in my opinion. Uh, and, and it seems like you concur with that. Yes, sir. You encourage tournaments. You you encourage competition. And the, you know, kind of, I guess, answer for me the reason you do that. What's what's the thought process behind that? Because some people might be a little shy about, oh, you know, I don't, don't want to do that. We are a uh, tournament-driven school. And what that means is, um, yes, we believe in tournaments. Tournaments are what puts you into that category of, hey, I'm going to get out here in front of these people. I'm not going to be in my comfort zone. I'm taken out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to set my goals to do my stuff, to achieve my goal, even if I place or not. That's one. Second, what do, we, what do they learn by that? What do we learn by that? Can they now get in front of a whole class to do a book report? I can now. I might, might not have the vocabulary of some, but I can definitely get out there and teach a big uh, hundreds of people. Sure you can. I couldn't do that back then. Yeah. Putting yourself out in an uncomfortable position that you're not used to until you get comfortable, great. Competition is something that rewards you for your hard work. Yes. Yes. Right. So I'm going I'm I'm to tell you this real quick. It's not a big story, but it's about this one individual. If, if he hears this, he'll know it's him. Um, he's a fifth degree black belt now. He's in his 20s. He still gets sick. He cannot eat before he competes. Just nerves. It's nerves, and it's something else he said he has, but it's nerves. And I remember the first time I've seen it happen, I was judging him. He was a lot younger. He was, I think, a color belt, maybe a young black belt, and he's sparring. Then all of a sudden, he gets sick in the middle of a sparring match. And I stopped the whole match. It was me. I was the center judge. And I'm looking. You all right? <laughs> You're like, oh, Lord. <laughs> right. I was like, you all right? Yeah, you he feel goes, bad. He, he goes, I thought he was just sick. He says, no, his mom his mom is he's nerves, Master Denny, nerves. At that time, I think I was Mr. Denny. I'm not sure. All right, let's get a mop. Let's get whatever we got to do. We got to <laughs> clean this up. But I, I guess my point is, is this guy competes a lot. National events. Every tournament in Texas, he's there. Yeah. He's from Louisiana, but he's there all the time. And he's so talented. He's a fierce competitor. But that's how he is. That's how he is. And look, but he does it anyway. He he puts himself uh, – I'll, I'll give you another real-world example of that outside of martial arts that um, – because that, to me, is, is – uh, you and I believe in that philosophy 1 million percent. Um, but I'll give you another scenario. So uh, I was a outside sales rep for a paint cuttings manufacturer for 25 years. And there was a particular 
type of paint coating that um, when I first started going outside and calling on people, I never wanted to call on this industry. And that was the industrial industry. And the reason I didn't was because it's extremely technical. And I was scared that they would ask me something I didn't know the answer to. And it would, number one, it would uh, make it look like I didn't know what I was talking about. But number two, it would embarrass me. So I avoided for a little while calling on that particular industry. And then one day I said, you know what? If I ever want to really get to where I want to be in this business, I'm going to have to call on those folks. I've got to get over this. So I started calling on nothing but industrial people. What I did, not even realizing I was doing it, was number one, I forced myself to learn those industrial products um, because I didn't want to be embarrassed. But number two, I put myself in that uncomfortable position. And every time I did it, it got a little easier and a little easier for me to make those. Next thing you know, it was my, it was actually my number one industry that I was selling to. And it was the one that made me the most nervous in the beginning. I can speak from my experience and things that I've seen that what you say is absolutely 100% accurate. And everybody, I don't care how confident you are, has nerves. That's right. And you get in front of a bunch of your peers, and the last thing you want to do is look bad. And and uh, But the satisfaction after you do it is amazing because you, you, you got through it and you lived and all those sorts of things. You didn't just absolutely die. So um, shout out on that. I agree with that 100% as well. If you want, let me tell you um, the first time I competed. Sure. I'd love to hear that story. It's Greenbelt. It's Greenbelt, and it was at the Belmont, Baton Rouge Belmont, Michael Clare's tournament. Went in, froze in my form. Could not compete. Could not finish it. Froze. Just so, did a couple moves and could not remember. Wow. Went blank. Yep. Bowed out. I said, well, get him in sparring. And back in those days, we didn't have all this gear. Yeah. You know, so that's interesting. Get in there. Kid busted my lip, bleed blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll never do a tournament in my life. <laughs> And um, I waited a little while. Next tournament came around. Probably I waited about six months or more, maybe more. I don't remember. I went to first place. I, I, I made sure I trained enough to be prepared. Yeah. You never wanted that to happen again. No. Back then, the tournaments were a lot smaller. So I was, I think, a red belt. I wasn't even a black belt. But they, they mixed me with black belts. Oh, great. Like I, I went against a second degree black belt. Mm. And I knew him. And uh, I ended up beating him, but the way I beat him, I, I'm probably not as, as happy as what I should be. I saw he was doing a jump sidekick, and he was coming down on top of my head. And all I knew is to throw a sidekick as hard as I could and Ain't knock him gone. out of the yell, not knock him out of the air. And I did. And when I did, I clipped him in the head. Oh. Points, I beat him. I was so happy. <laughs> I, didn't have, I was happy not about beating him. I was happy I didn't have to go again. Because that was the first and second. I was done. I was so nervous because I was with all the black belts. Yes. And look at you now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> look at me now. I tested for eighth. I get nervous still. Sure. But before I tested for eighth, when I walked up, I had a lot of obstacles to overcome before testing. One, I, blew, I, I tore my ACL. I had surgery that November before testing in um, July. So I rebuilt it for eight months on a quick rehab and I was nervous mm -hmm. and I remember going up and I, they put me in the center because some numbers got messed up you're supposed to be in four pods pod 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 you know in the corners and they put me right dab in the center because they messed up and put me in a different area and I was supposed to be in this area mm -hmm. so I went dead last and they put me right in the center and all I can remember is when I ran up, my nerves started to get to me. Nerves are, are tough. Yes. And and the important thing is that people realize that uh, it's normal. But uh, three-time world champion, you've trained some world champions. Yes, we have quite a few at the school now. Um, and I'm proud of every one of them. You know, yeah. every year we've pulled some world champions since, since 2016. Wow. Yep. 
every uh, year so far. Speaks to student and teacher on that. Um, well, I will say that it speaks to students mainly because of their um, training ability and their um, goal settings. Yes. Because it's, I always talk about reps. It's not like a, like one or two reps. We're talking about thousands. Yes. Yes. So. I still say you deserve a lot of credit. He's my, you're very modest. And, and, but I'm going to tell you what, from someone, you know, it's kind of like, yes, the students out there, they're doing it, but you're, you're the one uh, motivating him. You're the one keeping, you know, teaching them. You're teaching them this stuff. And, and I'm going to give you credit. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> so uh, good job to bo- to both student and teacher. Um, you brought some weapons today, and I definitely want to show these. So I'm, I'm gonna have my assistant and awesome executive producer, Miss Tiffany Secord, hand me these. You can you can come in front of the camera; it's all good, or you can just pass it. E- anyone? There you go. Uh, there you she go. grabbed the one first that she probably liked to hit me with. <laughs> so, so tell us about that one. This is um, a combat weapon. So combat weapon is now utilized on a progression from sparring. So progression, they they decided to get into this because of the single stick, the screamers on using padded weapons to score with. Yes. To be able to show the defense patterns and also striking ability. Oh, that's cool. It is so fun. Yeah. It and is. it did not have that when I was no, there. No, no. And it's this is, you know, you have a lot of people that maybe have hip issues that are unable to kick a whole bunch. There's no kicking in this. It's just utilizing the striking of the weapon. It's understanding the opponent. It's watching the opponent. Kind of took it, you can kind of look at it as uh, they took it away from fencing to a certain point. You're you're still checking the person. You're still using your evading and all that in sparring, but with the weapon. It is super fun. It looks super fun. And let's, let's pass another one over here. This is a staff, also known as a jongbong. It's the Korean term. This is actually my uh, my daughter's. Used to be my son's when he was younger. Um, the staff is exactly what most people they they call it a bow staff, but we call it a jongbong. You can manipulate this weapon in XMA all around your body. In traditional, we do it as more of a good striking and um, reinforce stripping the weapons and stuff like that. One thing you have to look at as a weapon is an extension of your body. It's an extension of your arm. So if I punch and I strike, that's a punch. So anything you do, that's what you, that's the way you want to look at it as a weapon. Don't right. look at it as you're just swinging a weapon. You're looking at it as you're extending your body for extra length. Yes. All right. This is just a more of a long range type weapon. Interesting. Right. Yeah. We call well, we call this middle range staff, but there is also one that's called long range. There you go. Very cool. One of my favorites right, right. here. This is the training protec. These are all protec weapons called the gum do. It's the Korean version of a screener. Um not a screen, I'm sorry, uh, um katana. So the gumbo gum do gumbo. Gum- <laughs> got a little bit of Cajun in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the gum gum dough is some that something that came not too too long ago compared to a lot of the other weapons. It's one of the last weapons that was introduced, and now it's it's growing to be very big. Yes, form is really traditional, precise cuts. Now the ATA is um, partnered with. A true, which he's an eighth degree in ATA, but he's also, if I'm correct, I don't want to say it wrong because he'll get he'll me. get you. <laughs> yeah. A third degree black belt in this weapon. Now, the ATA is now progressing people as long as they're going through him on becoming, you know, trying to achieve. You got to go through it. It's a ranking system. Yes. And it's not as easy. Specifically for that weapon. Yes. Interesting. And I like that. It's definitely not that easy. I went through a little course with him, and then we he started telling me that what we had to do on to not just this fingertip push ups. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I think I can do fingertip push ups. I don't know if everybody can, but <laughs> but there was cert, certain things that you had to do, and and honestly, this is a a, a really good sword 
to show your cuts and all that. But you can't hear this one as good whenever you, you know that. that yeah. This one, this one you can hear. This is more of an upgrade. And this is still a ProTech approved sword. Dragon Pearl. Yeah, yeah, that it's dragon beautiful. is, it really is. And the interesting thing, that's aluminum This is that you're showing yes. there. And if you hold that, it's extremely light, obviously, Correct. because of the aluminum. Correct. But it makes a sound. Right. It does. And then also, when you make that noise with that weapon, you know your cut is good. If you're not, that means your hand's turned incorrectly, your position's wrong. It tells the tale. Yes. It will have a tattletale on you. Yes. Yes. Yep. And ATA that does have a um, a metal sword, but this is the one. Very good. And one of the last ones. We had more, but these are the only ones I brought. And these are, the, are one that most people may be familiar with, Enter the Dragon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great movie, by the way. Yes. Um, so these are nunchucks, other words, for Korean, um, in the Korean culture, called songshabongs in ATA. This weapon is a protect approved. So anytime I say protect approve, <clears throat> they're padded weapons. <clears throat> we have to use certain weapons because we spin them so much. You go get a cheap one, it's going to fall apart on you. It's going to break. It's going to fly off. These are protect approved to make sure they're cushioned enough. Their strings are sturdy. They're not going to fall apart on you. And um, I have several people that won world champion this weapon. I have um, two, I think, that won on staff. Wow. Um, and I have, I think, a couple that won in XMA and Creative and also a couple that won in um, Combat Sporing. Interesting. And what what's your favorite out of those? And I know it might be hard to pick. Yeah, your favorite oh, weapon to, to staff. use. Staff. That's really? Point. Well, I'd have paid you for a nunchuck guy or Sasha Bone. Well, the staff mainly because I'm actually one of two pro tech guy, pro tech uh, Jong Bong people for ATA. Oh, okay. I just got that title a couple months back. We did a big um, gathering, and myself and um, Senior Master Morrison out of Texas is my partner in crime, and we're going to be eventually teaching all of ATA, which is all of the United States, all of, oh, all over. Like they'll, they'll come to tournaments and we'll, we'll do those seminars. Very good. And, uh, we definitely want to talk about this and that is earlier we mentioned you never stop learning in Taekwondo and, uh, you have an instructor, okay. even though you are way up there on the, on the rankings, you have an instructor and I let's do. give him, uh, him or her a shout out and, and, uh, yeah, um, Chief Master Marks is there. There you go. He's so Chief Master Marks is there. He is from Allen, Texas, A3 Black Belt. Um, multi, multi world champion in a lot of events. Um, very talented um, gentleman. He owns two schools. Um, I can't not say anything negative about him. He is um, a very good mentor, very good instructor. Tells it like it is. Yes, yes, and that, and you can't ask for more than that. And obviously, an expert at what he does. Yes, yes. Um, now, earlier I also mentioned um, that I was going to talk about this at the end of the show, and that was uh, my, I guess, my outside looking in perspective of what martial arts is all about. And I had said, and, and Master Dendy had mentioned earlier that uh, your journey starts at Black Belt. You know, you get to that point and then your journey starts. And and uh, I'll give you my perspective on kind of we had talked about you don't compete anymore except for national events. Um, and some people might say, why, why, why did they stop them from competing? And and even as a, you know, a, a black belt, I don't know, when do you stop? Is it fifth degree or fourth, fifth Six. degree, sixth degree? OK, why do you in, which is your mastership? That's when you. you that's that first stage of mastership, I guess you could say. Um, and some people might say, well, why do you stop competing? And even as as a sixth degree, when you get that, there's probably ATA masters out there that were like, I can't compete no more. And they, you know, that right. drives them nuts. Um, so I'll give you 
my opinion on how it mimics life. And that is at some point it stops becoming about you and it starts becoming about your teaching. And when you're a six degree master, you have figured out now you are pass. It's you're passing that down, right? You're passing that down to these tiny tigers or maybe these teenagers and these adults and all these, these people. And, and, and you've got this school and you're teaching and, um, I've always said that leadership is is not about uh, being number one, even though as we come up in life, that's what it's about in our minds, um, especially if you were in a sales career like me. It was every month. You were starting out a zero and you wanted to be one. Um, nothing wrong with that. But true leadership is serving others, passing on knowledge, things like that. Servant leadership, I, uh, I've called it and a lot mm-hmm. of people have called it. Um it's truly what you're doing at this stage of, you know, you've done almost everything you can do in the world of martial arts and Taekwondo. And, but what you're doing now is you're leaving your legacy for others. And I want to read something And this, you know, I research, I do my research folks. And I want to read something that, um, that one of your students had wrote. And of course, I don't have the paper, but um, I, I'm going to do it from memory. And I can't remember the the student's name, but it was on your Facebook, and it was uh, it was a few years back. Basically, he had posted a picture of you and him, and it was one of the professional martial arts pictures that you mm-hmm. see, and uh, that incidentally y'all do a great job of. And um, he had put in there, uh, this guy right here is like family to me, and. Um, Essentially, to sum that up, and I'm going to paraphrase, but he had basically said, I graduated from high school this year. I never would have done that without this guy and his wife, Miss Rachel. Um, that's huge. That's huge. One day, you you may sit back and, and actually have the time to think about how many lives you might have changed. And that's what leadership is. It's not about being number one. It's about changing other people's lives and making them better people. You're doing it every day. That's that's huge. It deserves a lot of respect. Um, you know, you're a very modest person, and I know you would never say that about yourself, but I see that, and I see that through your students and the lives that you've changed. So I enjoyed this conversation. I appreciate you coming on. Um, One thing uh, we do want to mention is where you're located. So people have heard this, and hopefully you're going to have to bar the door shut. (laughs) You have so many people coming in. Um, Where are you located now? I know that you you were over there uh, uh, on the other side of range by uh, uh, Big Mike's, but now you have have moved into a new facility. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, the new facility is actually right across the street from Investor Bank, right mm-hmm. next door to the Auto Zone. Yes, yeah. So, so we, have, we it, have a parking lot in the back, and we have a parking lot in the front. So you can actually park in the back and enter from the back into the parent area. That's great advice. Yeah. So go check them out over there, and they have a website. What's your website? Uh, InspiredMartialArts.com. InspiredMartialArts.com, and they have two Facebook pages that I found out. Um, so they have uh, Denim Springs, ATA, Martial, martial Arts, arts and, inspired. and Inspired Martial Arts. So get both of those a follow. I don't know yeah. which one's more active. I know one has more the, people. Den- Denim Springs has been around a lot more because we just changed the name not too long ago to Inspired. So we yeah. just kept the Denim Springs, ATA, Martial Arts. Um, and that's also part of the website is dsatamartialarts.com. So you can use either one. Very good. And I'm going to link all of that to the description of this video. So if you're driving or something and listening, uh, listening, don't watch, but listen if you're driving. Um, but if you're at home and you don't have a pen handy, just scroll down. You'll see the, the links for all of that stuff below. You can click on it. Give them a like on Facebook, a follow, all those sorts of things. Check it out. But most importantly, try it out. Try it out. I guarantee you, you'll love it. Take your kids to it. Look, make it a family affair. Family. Uh, bring the whole family. Two free classes. You have nothing to lose. There's no obligation. He's not going to handcuff you and force you to sign a paper. Uh, 
he, you know, he wants uh, he wants you to try it out and see yes. what they're all about. And from there, trust me, the decision's easy. So, uh, so please check that out. We'll link all that to this video again. Thank you for coming on. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate you doing this. Yes, sir. Uh, if you need uh, further information on local leaders of the podcast in regards to sponsorship or being featured on the show, please reach out to me at Jim at local leaders of podcast.com. I do want to thank all my sponsors for your continued support. And speaking of sponsors, before we do close out, you have a tournament coming up pretty soon. I do look, I'm sponsoring this tournament folks. And I'll tell you, I have all the information. You can reach out to me or uh, Master Dendy, and uh, he can get you information. But just real quick, where is the tournament going to be at and the date? Well, the date is April 23rd. And it's at? The the location is going to be in uh, Ponchatoula, actually. Ponchatoula, Strawberry City. So uh, not too far at all. There's kind of in these tournaments, it's various schools in in the area. Well, it's – Actually, uh, it's all out of the area, too. We're going to have people from Texas, people from Florida. We'll have people from Alabama, Tennessee, all that, plus in the local area. Yes. So uh, last year was the biggest one um, we've had in a while. It was 430 competitors. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty Very good. It was, uh, I guess people were just ready to get out. And, a, and everybody from uh, from youngsters to adults are going to be at this tournament. Yep. Even if you just want to come and watch, you're more than welcome to. But it was, it's all scheduled out. It's actually on the website. You can click tournament, look at the schedule, and you can come see what everything's about. It's fun to watch. Yes. And and uh, look, support these these uh, these local kids and the and these uh, obviously local businesses and give a sponsorship. I know there's a lot of businesses that listen to this podcast and and uh, the, you know these sponsorships are they go a long way and and uh, to support our youngsters here and our businesses here. So you can reach out to me or Master Denny for information on that. So thank you very much. Uh, Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you, love your community, support local business, just like inspired martial martial arts. arts and keep leading. Thank you very much. Dane Arnold with iTrade Exchange has been enabling small business in the Livingston Parish area to save cash through his network of over 300 participating Livingston Parish businesses. Saving cash by trading services with other exchange members is what iTrade Exchange is all about. For more information, contact Dane Arnold at 225-205-3640 or visit itradeexchange.biz.